All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one today. I'm going to be talking about some trade rumors. On Friday was the day that players that signed contracts in free agency are now eligible to be traded. 81 different players are now eligible to be traded. There's still a few more that can't be traded due to January 15th because of other contracts and stuff like that. But most of players that sign contracts for ACR are now able to be traded, so that opens up a little more of the gates for trades to happen. Now, are they going to happen soon? I don't know. We're going to talk all about that here in today's video. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're on the road to 500 subscribers, so if you do it, the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. Link to my Twitter, TikTok, stuff like that in the description down below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So I want to start this talking about the Toronto Raptors. Um, they're a team that a lot of people think, and especially me, I also think that a rebuild or a retool is coming soon, um, coming into the year. After they lost Fred VanVleet, lost Nick Nurse, they lost a lot of their guys that made them kind of who they were a few years ago when they won a championship, and even when they were a playoff team. And also even more now with the improvement of Scotty Barnes, who has been great, maybe even an all-star this year. You know, the young guy kind of taking the reins. So now people are like, okay, now I think it's more comfortable to trade some pieces if I'm Toronto. Especially Pascal Siakam and OG Anunoby are both on the last year of their contracts. Uh, Pascal Siakam, of course, is a guy who's been multiple-time All-Star, All-NBA type of player. He hasn't had the best season this year that he usually has, but he's still been pretty good. You know, he started off slow. He's starting to pick back up. Uh, but he's a guy that is very interesting on the trade market. He's an All-Star kind of level piece. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what team would want him. The Hawks have been a team that has been very, you know, talked about the last year and getting Siakam because they're a team that, you know, maybe could use another all-star, star-like guy on their team. Uh, but very interesting to see where Pascal could go. I think the Hawks are a team that, I mean, is probably one of the better ones, you know, to, um, to, to get him because... Like, they kind of need a forward, I guess, like that. But then also, Jalen Johnson's been good. And the Hawks are kind of bad this year. So, it wouldn't be surprising if they could go try to make a big move to try to, you know, get better. Uh, what well, does it make him better? Probably because you're adding another all-star guy. But I just don't know about the fit with him. The Trey and DeJounte also have the ball in their hands all the time. So, where would Pascal fit in that situation? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, trying to think of other teams that maybe could use Pascal. The Indiana Pacers. You know, they don't even have a little forward. Um... Another all-star type of guy, Pascal Siakam, what the trade package would look like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the trade market for Pascal, or the trade package that the Raptors give for Pascal, I don't know what it would be, because he is in the last year of his deal. Um, I don't know what the perception around him on the league is, if he's like a good get or not, I don't know. But, I mean, I think they can get something decent. They probably can get a pick or two for Pascal, even though they're probably going to try to go and get more for him, obviously. But, I mean, he's a, he's a good player. I think like he's one of the more underrated you know, kind of guys, all-star level players that people see, but they don't really respect him as what he actually is. But Pascal's a really good player. You know, but I think the more intriguing piece over there in Toronto is OG Ananobi. Um, of course, he's a guy that you could kind of, a 3 and D, one of the better defending wings in the league. He also can act on the three pretty solid. He can get his own buckets when he needs to as well. Just a really good player, good wing that a lot of, a lot of teams will try and go after. I feel like all other 29 teams Try to go after him. There's a report that said the Pistons were eyeing him. Um, are they going to get him? Probably not, you know, because why would the Raptors want anything for the Pistons right now? Well, they do have some young players, but I don't know how much Detroit would give up for. Which, well, honestly, maybe they would give up a lot, considering they lost 23 games in a row, you know. Um, so maybe that. Uh, the Kings have been a team that's been talked about OG and Pascal. Uh, there's a report that came out, I think, yesterday or the day before that said that the Raptors think they can get Keegan Murray from the Kings for one of those two players. And after what Keegan did last night, he dropped 47 points at 12 threes. I don't think, yeah, Keegan Murray's on the block. Even though he's not had the best season, he's still a very valuable young piece of that Kings team. They're not going to give him up just for OG and Pascal, you know. But, yeah, OG's a guy that you definitely could see go anywhere, really. I mean, the Grizzlies who were a team, especially last year, um, that one, especially with how, you know, kind of not good their wing depth is, that would be a good piece. Um, the Indiana Pacers, you know, Woj said, we have been saying for the past few days or weeks that um, the Pacers are going to be on the market looking. But I feel like a more wing player defensively because they're a very bad defensive team. So OG would fit right in and be kind of a guy that, you know, they really rely on a whole lot. And that would be a really fun P 
piece to add over in Indiana. But yeah, you really, honestly, you can go to all of the 29 teams and you have a reason to add OG Ananobi. You know, he's just a guy that any team would want, def a defensive wing that also can score. You know, like who doesn't want that on their team? You know, and he's on the last year of his deal. He is a younger guy as well. You know, I don't know how much he would get paid in the offseason. Probably a good amount of money. You know, nothing insane, but probably a good amount. But yeah, the Raptors team definitely should keep your eye on at the trade market, the trade deadline. Right now, they're 10 and 15. They're tied for 10th in the Eastern Conference with the Toronto Raptors. I mean, with the Atlanta Hawks, actually. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could definitely tell. I mean, they probably make a play in, but I don't think they're going to really do anything significant in the playoffs or anything like that. So um, yeah, the Raptors are a team definitely keep your eye on for this. Another team I want to talk about is the Golden State Warriors. Of course, with all the stuff going on around them recently, Woj came out and said that uh, the Warriors are going to be, you know, teams are calling the Warriors. Teams are calling the Warriors, and the Warriors might be their most active they've been. You know, usually they're a team that, you know, doesn't really make a lot of trades, in-season trades, a whole lot, but now they have new management. Mike Dunleavy Jr. is now the new GM. He traded away Jordan Poole, and yeah, now, you know, especially with how bad they've been, Maybe this year the Warriors finally do some moves. And I've talked about a couple videos how the Warriors really need to make some moves because right now it's not looking great. They're 11 and 14. They're 11th in the West. They're three games behind the 10 spot. So, yeah, that's something. So they really need to pick it up, especially now with Draymond Green going to be suspended for who, who knows how long um, with what he did. Klay Thompson not having the best season. Uh, he's been good the last two games, but Klay Thompson not having the best year. And he's also not on the last year of his deal. There's a report that came out that said the Warriors offered him a two-year, $48 million deal, and he said no, he wants his money, but the Warriors don't really want to pay him because why would you pay him at this point? He hasn't been good. Andrew Wiggins has lost his basketball skills. I don't know what's going on with Andrew Wiggins. Um, yeah, they, they're not good right now, and they need to make a move. They want to capitalize still on Steph Curry being great at 35 years old. Um, what other guys they can get, I'm not really sure because I don't really know what the value of Klay Thompson or Andrew Wiggins or even Draymond Green is right now. I mean, I feel like teams will probably go after Clay just because, I mean, his his Clay Thompson. You know, he could bring some shooting, even though he hasn't been shooting the best this year. Maybe they think they could bring he could bring they could bring the best out of him, especially if he goes to a team that's like in the playoffs and he doesn't need as many shots. Maybe, um, and if it doesn't work out, they can just let him go for the rest of the, for, in free agency. I don't know. Angel Wiggins. I don't really know who wants him. He's got a big contract, and right now he's not playing anywhere near that contract so i don't know if you want to pay him or you want to grab him you know even though he was good the past two years you know i don't know what happened to him this year draymond is still a solid player but it's like you haven't seen him outside the warrior system so if we trade for him who knows if he's going to be as good as he is or even if he's going to play <laughs> even if he's going to play because if he keeps you know punching people in the face you know like i don't know what's going to happen to him so the warriors don't really have a lot of like piece to trade even their young pieces you know josh kaminga could be a solid get for a young guy but i don't think he's like if you're trading a star like a pascal siakam type player is jato kaminga really like the main young guy main piece you want to bring back that gets everyone excited i don't really know i think he can be a good player you know but it's just like i don't know how much value he has most moody the same you know i think he's going to be a very solid player but i don't think he's kind of like a main piece you bring back and you're like oh shoot we got moses moody like okay cool <laughs> Yeah, I don't really, I don't really know. So yeah, the Warriors need to make some moves. What moves they can make, I don't really know. Because I mean, they have some pieces, but they're not doing great. And I don't know what if other teams are going to be really attracted to the pieces that they have in Golden State. You know, another team I want to talk about is Utah Jazz. They've been very, you know, there's been a lot of reports coming out the last few days. The first one that came out was about John Collins, who they acquired in the off season, saying that they're kind of not, they don't like how he's been, you know, kind of working into the team you know they said they're frustrated with his slow uptake on learning the system on both ends and he's now on the trade block again uh which he's been on i feel like every year since his rookie year he's been on the trade block and now in utah thought it was gonna be a fresh start he's been having an okay year you know he hasn't been anything spectacular you know but he's just kind of around there he's rebounding the ball pretty well you know he shoots the ball well from three sometimes but yeah the big contract he got after the Atlanta Hawks conference finals run has looked to be a very bad contract and now the Jazz want to trade him again I don't know what teams really would want that contract for like a is he even a starter level player anymore probably but like I don't know like what the Pacers really want John Collins 
on their team, you know? Like, maybe. Maybe. He could be like a lobster, maybe be like a, a upgraded OP Toppin, I guess. A little bit of OP Toppin that rebounds more and is a little better defensively, I guess. Um, the Pacers, I, yeah, I just don't really know. I mean, with that contract he's got, it's like, you know, it, there's not really any, it's li very limited, very limited. Also for the Utah Jazz, the big one, Larry Marketing. A lot of reports are saying Larry Marketing is not untouchable anymore and that if the right package comes along, he could be moved. Which is a big spot. Larry Markkinen, of course, last year was an all-star starter. One most improved player this year. He's still been good. He's missed a lot of games. And the Jazz aren't good. But he's still been a very good player. And he's a piece that a lot of the teams are going to be attracted to. A lot of teams are going to be attracted to. Uh, especially because he's not on a big contract. You know, he's still, I think after this year, he still has a year left. I am think. I'm not 100% sure. But I, th I don't think he's con his contract is not big at all. You know, he doesn't have that much longer on his deal. So if they... If a team can go snag a Larry Marketing really quick for a playoff run, that would be big. I think a lot of teams would be interested in Larry Marketing. I mean, he's a four that big four, seven foot. You can play him with the three, the four, maybe even the five in some lineups. You know, he could knock down the ball, knock down that shot, shoot, can stretch the floor, can score inside. Defensively, he's not bad. And he's a guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands. You know, he averages, he averaged last year 25 points per game, but 25 points really on like catch and shoot and just getting in it, getting it in the system in the offense. You know, he's a guy that doesn't need to get the ball on the wing and say, clear out, clear out, clear out, let me go to work 10 times a game. You know, he just, you know, stand in the corner, come off screens, knock it down, pick and roll, you know, dive, come in, dunk. Like, that's how he gets his points. You know, he does it really, really efficiently as well. You know, so, I mean, any team would love a big forward, like a lot of marketing. You know, the Kings I've seen, maybe a better team that could do it, the Pacers, maybe even though they're not good defensively just go on on the offense i think that would be a very solid move there's a lot of teams that could be in line marketing he might be like the the gem right now the underrated gem of the trade that the trade deadline that if he does get traded a team get him and everyone be like how do we let this team how do we let line marketing go for that you know uh, what his value could be I and mean, i think utah can get back some pretty solid things especially with i think like how many teams with want line marketing how good he's been you know and especially with that contract you know Jazz don't have to take on any like huge, like John Collins type contracts. You know, I feel like they can get something solid for marketing. I feel like teams would give up some for more marketing. You know, you can get a good young player or two and a couple picks for Lowry, and then Utah's right back to rolling. You know, but yeah, I think Lowry marketing will be the gem of the trade deadline if he does get traded. It's not a guarantee, but if he does get traded, that would be a great move. I'd like to see. I'd, I'd be very interested to see the bidding war for Lowry marketing and what he ends up getting because. He's a guy that definitely could go to any team, really plug in right there and be a big factor for them, you know, especially on the offensive end. Um, and the last, well, a couple more things I want to talk about. Uh, the Chicago Bulls, um, Zach Levine, probably going to get traded. They've been pretty solid since he's gone out. DeMar DeRozan as well. You know, a lot of people talk about DeMar DeRozan. They said that he and Knicks are two of the top teams that he will want to go to if he does eventually get traded. Um, how they fit, I don't know. Because DeMar DeRozan is a very interesting player to just trade. You know, DeMar DeRozan is a very interesting one because he's not a guy that you could just plug in anywhere and he can play. You know, I feel like he can eventually find a role, but I don't think it's the smoothest, you know, get him to this team and just let him go. You know, like he's a guy that definitely he needs the ball in his hands, got to get his mid-ranges in and get to the free throw line and stuff like that. Defensively, he's not that great. You know, he can pass a little bit, facilitate, but he's not... He's going to be looking to score first. He's not a three-point shooter. Like, we know this about DeMar DeRozan. So he's a very tough fit everywhere, you know? Like, if he goes to, like, a team like the Kings or something, I don't know how much he'll fit in because the Kings have a lot of ball movement. They have De'Aaron and DeMontis, and, De and then DeMar needs the ball in his hands a lot more. He, he would need to go to a team that needs just buckets. Like, a team like the Miami Heat, I feel like wouldn't be that bad, you know? Even though you don't have a lot of spacing with Jimmy Bam and DeMar DeRozan on the court, you know, it's going to be a not that much, not good spacing. But, I mean, a team like Miami that just kind of needs some offense, I wouldn't mind DeMar going over there and just being a guy that, you know, at the end of the game, him and Jimmy take turns, take him home. You know, uh, the Lakers have been talked about, of course, obviously, because he's from LA and the, it's the Lakers. I feel like the Lakers would be a very weird fit as well. LeBron and DeMar DeRozan. And AD all like try to work in the low block would be very interesting, you know. And LeBron definitely needs some shooting around him. And DeMar 
provides mid-range shooting. It doesn't provide a lot of three-point shooting. They're already not a good three-point shooting team as it is. You know, Zion Demar wouldn't be perfect for that. Yeah, Demar's just a very weird fit because of how his game is. You know, and at this point, he's like what thirty-something years old. I don't think we're converting him into being a spot-up mid-range three-corner three-point shooter at this point. Like, I think it's just it is what it is with Demar Derozan. So he's a very weird fit to bring. I would still like to see him get traded, obviously, because the Bulls need to trade everybody because they're not good, and they're not going to be good. But um, DeMar DeRozan is a very interesting, probably the most interesting in terms of, like, huh, what re where realistically, where can he go? What team would really try to bite the bullet? Not bite the bullet, but kind of just be the team that'd be like, you know what, I think we can use DeMar the right way type of team, you know? But, yeah, trade season is uh, almost upon us. Are any trades going to happen pretty soon? Probably not. You're probably going to have to wait a little bit. January 15th is another day where uh, kind of everybody gets o Everybody's open now. Like, everybody's unlocked into getting traded. Uh, so, yeah, very interested, interested to see what teams make moves, where players go. I mean, it's one of the most exciting parts of the NBA season. You know, trade season. Everybody loves to see some movement, some trades, shock up, shake up the league. You know, the Wolves bombs, the Shams. You know, tweets, everybody checking on the trade deadline. It's going to be very, very exciting. We still have a lot of time left to go before that happens. But still, just getting the rumors going and kind of getting into that getting into that season. You know, for trades, it's very, very exciting. Can't wait for it. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing. Like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really upset a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.